What's what's up now? Am I being catfished over here or what? I mean, what's going on now? So Dan Ross purchased A and S Kynard out about two years ago. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So it's all one company. Um, they are in the process of switching everything over to you know um, one logo, but it's still in the works. All you have to do is stay. Thank you for calling Dan Ross. This is Nicole. Uh, Nicole, how's it going? This is uh, LaShawn, who you've been talking to in the text. Hi, how are you? I'm doing all right. I'm 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 kind of thrown aback. So before be, before I go into my rhetoric and and to my spiel, I am doing uh, I am doing a voice record so I could take the information that you give me, so that I could take uh-huh. it over to so I could take it over to my uh, to my group as well my facebook group and let you know let them know that i talked to you and all like that okay uh but before i i i click on i i, I click on the, the the internet and i go to the internet and i type in s and a and s canard and day ross comes up what's uh What's 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 up now? Am I being catfished over here or what? I mean, what's going on now? So Dan Ross purchased A and S Kynard out about two years ago. Oh, okay. Um, okay. So it's all one company. Um, they are in the process of switching everything over to, you know, um, one logo, but it's still in the works. Um, COVID kind of put a hindrance on that a little bit, um, mm-hmm. but it is all one company. A and S and Dane Ross is all one company. Okay. This, uh, com- this position is a dedicated position, um, which means you would be hauling for a dedicated customer, not dedicated lane. So this lane itself runs anywhere from Massachusetts all the way down through Georgia, as far west as Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. Mm. Um, it does pay 82 cents per mile. That's all miles loaded and empty. Um, wait, 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 wait. Slow, 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 whoa, 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 slow, slow, slow down now. Slow down now. Hold, hold on now. Hold on now. It, it, lot, lots the process over here. It, uh, lots the process. Mm-hmm. You, you said. Hold on now. Hold on. Let, let me just jump back ahead right quick. So, Day Ross. I, I'm, I'm not hip to them per se. I am hip to. A what is it? A S Canard. I am hip to them, but I'm not too hip to uh Day Ross. Where did they come from? Like how long they been in existence? Uh, what's what's the background of, of Day Ross? Day Ross has been around for years. They're mostly Canadian though. They just started over here in the in the US side of things. Mm-hmm. Um right now they run the Northeast, which is what A and S they, the business they took over for A and S, and they also brought over a lot of automotive, which is out west, Minnesota, um, Iowa, those locations. Oh, okay. um, but okay. Dan Ross is primarily just starting into the United States with the A and S business that they took. Okay, so they, so so they're a Canadian company. So uh, if I now I know you're talking about the the, the dedicated lane that's uh, that's available. But you, wait, I rephrase that. You said it's not a lane; it's a, a dedicated customer. So whatever I whatever I pick up from, uh, I will just deliver to wherever they need it to be delivered to. Yeah. So this is all for Georgia Pacific account. So you would pick up out of one of the Georgia Pacific locations, taking it to the location that that it goes to. So let's say you picked up there in Cleveland, Akron, Ohio location. And you would take it to, for instance, Carlisle, Pennsylvania. From Carlisle, Pennsylvania, you could take a load down through Charlotte, North Carolina. From Charlotte, you could go over to Kentucky. So you can go anywhere within the network. So anything from Massachusetts down through uh, Georgia over to Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama. Um, Those are the locations that this particular account runs. 
Okay, so so by the sounds of it, I would have to go up into the northeast pretty much. Oh, yeah, it's a definitely a northeast carrier. Um, so you would run from Massachusetts down. Oh, Massachusetts. Yeah. Jesus. All right. All right. Um, all right. And right right off the bat, 82 cent a mile. Yep. So the reason that's high mileage is because most regional drivers are getting 25 to 3000 miles a week. This one is not going to do that. You're going to get about 2200, possibly 24. But I always say stick to the low end, 2200. Um, so that way you can still have a decent check. So they bump your cent per mile up because the mileage is not going to go any higher. Mm. So you're going to average 18 to 1900 a week gross paycheck. Mm. Okay. So that, that'd be like gross. My tax bracket is around 300. So we figure about 18, that's three. So I'm still looking at about a good paycheck, about fifth, 14 to 1500 uh, a week. Oh yeah. It's definitely a good, it's definitely good money. Um, but that's, that's why the cent per mile is so high is because the mileage itself isn't going to be no three thousand dollars, three thousand miles a week like some of the other accounts that carriers have. Okay, okay. Now let me ask you then. Now this is now this is just uh, now this is just one particular uh, account. Is there is there any other uh, is there any other accounts that's available that I could probably jump on if I want to, or is it or are you just an over the road base type company? Well, the only other thing we would have at the moment in your area would be a regional, which is sixty-two cents per mile, and that's running our whole network. But it doesn't like. There's no like. Um, northeast. Set customer, there is northeast, so it, it would run anything from Maine down through Georgia and as far west as Michigan. Oh damn, Maine! Man. Ooh, first Massachusetts, now Maine. Ooh. That night, that, that's uh, the regional one. Ooh, yeah, man. That, okay, okay, okay. I'll definitely, I'll definitely let guys know about uh about that because a lot of a lot of well, let me ask you this: since since y'all like Northeast, then y'all pretty much a force dispatch type company. Well, the only place I don't really force you to go into is New York City, um, but they are going to expect you to run the network because that's what they hire on for as far as the regional positions go okay. to be able to run the freight that they have. Okay. So let's say, uh, let's say a driver, uh, a driver calls you up, you know, somebody from, uh, from, you know, from my, from my group calls you up and say, Hey, you know, I heard that you talked to uh LaShawn lockout men and I'm interested into the company. They get a hold of you. Uh, from the time, from the time that I'm talking to you right now, <laughs> from the time that I'm talking to you right now, how long would it take uh, from the time that I talk to you right now to the time to orientation? Um, so it just depends. It mostly depends on when they get me the application. So if you get me the application, I usually have you processed and approved within 24 hours. Orientations are every Monday and Wednesday. So it just depends on what day of the week that they give me an application and how available they are for the next orientation. All right. Uh, where now, now it's, now it's called day Ross. Where, where are you guys, mm -hmm. where are you guys located at and how would I get up to orientation and how would you get me there? Orientation is virtual. So you would do it one day at your house. Oh, okay. The next day you would go to York, Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and we would either do a car rental, a flight, um, those are the two options that you have to get to York PA. Um, and it's the very next day. So if you did orientation Monday, virtually, mm -hmm. you would come Tuesday for your road test okay. and then you pick up your truck and then you're dispatched out. All right. Um, if, you know, if the travel distance was far, so you traveled Tuesday and you wanted to take a, a day at the hotel before you road tested Wednesday, you could do that as well. Um, but most guys want to get in and out. They usually, right. I mean, as long as as long as you're not from like Georgia or Texas or something like that, most of them want to come in and, and get out pretty quickly. Now, as far um, as far as as far as getting as far as getting up there. Now, of course, I'm from Ohio, so PA is not that far from me. Coming into PA and getting up to York, probably about two, maybe three hours or so. But do you guys hire? Mm -hmm. do, do, is your higher areas? Uh, is it is it deep range or is it mid range or is it or is it a variance 
around the uh, around the terminal? Um, it varies. It depends on the account. Like, so for this account, I can hire within a fifty mile radius of Akron, Ohio. Oh, okay. Um each, each account in each hiring city is a different hiring range. Okay. Um, now it with, depends on what account they're looking for. Now with this account, now with this account right here, and I, I think I, I, I don't think I asked you, but I think I get like a maybe like a general idea. Is this is this home? Weekly or home on yeah. the weekends? See, there's a difference. Well, it's home, home on the weekend. So there you would you be go. home Friday or Saturday. Um, if you're home Friday, you're going to come out late Sunday. If you're home Saturday, you're going to come out Monday. Okay, okay. So it's basically it's basically the weekend, but it's a 34, 34. by the sound of it. Yep, okay. correct. It is a 34 on the weekend. Okay, okay. So pretty much one day off pretty much i mean they ain't bad they, day, yep. they, they, ain't, yep. they ain't bad but it they ain't bad but kind of suckish too because you know one day mm -hmm. you know one day on a saturday yeah. is really not enough time to do what you need to do and you got to get back out there on a sunday but that's cool though that's I, cool um i totally get you <laughs> no i'm with you on that um, now, as far as the dispatchers go, um, you know, what's what's the variance between driver, driver, dispatcher? Um, so there's between 25 and 30 drivers on a driver manager board. Typically, I know for this particular account, there's two driver managers for it. Um, and they divide the drivers on this account between the two driver managers. OK, uh, so you told me 82 cent a mile. Uh, I'm assuming that this is uh, you're you're not a 1099 company. You're a W two company, right? So if that's the case, what other what what other what other what are other pays that's paid to the driver, such as breakdown, holiday, detention, and layovers? Are all those uh, paid to the driver too? So those are those are kind of dealt with through the operations team on a case by case situation. Uh, for instance. Um, breakdown is something that's going to be depending on what the breakdown was um, those kind of things if it is a tire repair or something like that they'll pay you increments of time if it's a major major repair typically what they're going to do is send you a loaner get you towed somewhere or something like that so each breakdown is a little bit different um, detention is based off of the customer after you give two hours, some customers are two hours, some customers are three, and their rate is contracted into their rate. So some customers pay $12, some pay 15 and some pay 18 I believe, don't quote me on this, I believe this one is $18 an hour after two. It's either 18 or 15 but I'll have to double check with ops on this detention pay. All right. um, but it's not lower than 15 it's, I believe it's the 18 one on this one. All right. What about, uh, what about um, holidays? Holidays after you've been with us for 90 days, um, you get six holidays a year. It's the major holidays. They're paid at $100 for the holiday. Now, let me ask after you. After 90 days, All you right. get five days of PTO. All right. So after after 90 days, any holidays after which I would get paid for. Now, let me break Now let me break that down. Is it that I get paid for the holiday if I drive the holiday? Or do I get paid for the holiday and I could still take that day off? Oh, no, you don't have to drive for it. It's a holiday that you get paid for. So if it's like Christmas, New Year's, any of the six major holidays, as long as you've been here 90 days, you, it's a paid time off and you don't have to work. If you work, you still get the holiday pay plus your bay for okay. driving. Okay, awesome, awesome. Uh what about uh what what about what about the trucks? Uh not not to get into the detail of the trucks, but um once I come on, I start driving, can I take the truck home? Yeah, you take the truck and trailer home for your home time. You have to stay attached to the trailer. So if you have to place at your house, you can park it there. Otherwise, you'd park it at a truck stop or a lot near your house. Okay, so let me let, let me ask you now, now. Let me ask you a little bit about that for a second. Um, let's say that I do, which I do. Let's say that I have a secure uh, a secure parking for the trailer, uh, but I can 
I I I can bob I can't I can't bobtail home, but if I have a secure no. a secure location for the trailer, though. No, they don't let you bobtail home. Wow. Yee. But okay, so this is kind of now now don't get me I, I guess this is a formula that works a lot, but you know, this these are some of the questions that some of the drivers do need to understand and and pay attention to. Um mm-hmm. I understand that you guys want the truck and trailer attached, but if you guys want it, you know, we could leave it at a truck stop. What makes what makes a truck a truck stop more secured than you know a driver leaving the trailer at a secure place which he can lock up and then bring the truck home at a secure place where he can watch? Well, so the trailer has to stay attached for the freight. Um, I understand what you're saying. At a truck stop, it's, there's cameras all around. So if it does get broken into, it takes the liability off of you. Oh, okay. um, so there's cameras and everything. There's The police can get involved in that kind of situation. Um, there's all kinds of people. It's a little hard to break into a trailer at a truck stop that's attached to a truck because most people aren't going to mess with that trailer thinking a driver could be sleeping in there. They're not going to mess with it too much. But most of them do have cameras and, and uh, surveillance and things like that. So that's why they prefer to be at a truck stop. Okay, okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. That Hey, and, that, and that's cool. Like I said, it's just a question that needs, that, that needs to be asked because, you know, a, a lot of drivers don't, you know, some of them just don't have vehicles and, you know, they're able to, you know, bobtail home or whatever the case may be. But that's, uh, that's, that's, uh, that's cool. That's understandable. Um, what kind of equipment that you guys have? Uh, what, what, what would we, what would be drive? What would we be driving? Volvo or international. We are getting max in at the end of the month as well. Oh, the new, the, the new max, the anthem. Yep. Oh. The new max. Okay, okay, that's what's up. Now, let me ask you this. For for a driver like me, five years coming in, what truck do you think I would get into? Because I know I know you guys is only supposed to say, all right, we, we have, a, you know, certain trucks in a certain amount of years. You Would you actually know which one I would be getting into? Like, would I be getting into a 2020 that only has 100,000 miles on it? Or would I be getting into 2016 that has a half a million miles on it? I know. So you would most likely get into something like a 2017, depending on if you told me you wanted 2017 or newer, depending if you told me if you wanted an automatic or, or a 10-speed. Uh, would determine which truck you would get. Hold on, uh, hold, hold on now. Ten, ten speeds. We we still got manuals over there. Yeah, those are international. Okay, okay, yeah. A lot of drivers they don't they, they don't want to mess with the manuals, but ninety percent of the companies today is going fully automatic. But you guys still got some manuals for for some uh, old school drivers that 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 don't that don't want to consider uh, automatic. Yeah. That is, that is correct. We still have 10 speeds, and uh, we have both, actually. Now, the new Macs are going to all be automatic. Okay. Hey, guys, y'all y'all hear this, right? She said they got manuals for you, so y'all can stop talking about, about man, I don't want no man. I don't want no automatic. They got manuals. <laughs> Day Ross. Make sure you give them a call, man. Um, what, what's all inside the, what's, what's all inside the trucks? Um, do, do, do you guys got driver cameras in there? And if so, is it front and back or just back or what? So it just depends on the trucks. Now, I will tell you the newer ones coming in, they're not going to have anything at the moment. I don't know if they will eventually, but um, they at the moment, they do not. Um, the cameras are inward and outward facing. They're based off of triggered events. There's three triggered events. Um, one is collision obviously it's going to trigger it's a 12 second clip eight seconds before four seconds after the event i have that backwards <laughs> four seconds before eight <laughs> seconds after the event mm-hmm. um and then there is one for roll stability and then one for drastic drop in speed so you hard break 
Now, what happens is this video gets uploaded. I can't dial in a truck number and say, let me look up truck whatever and pull it up and look at you driving. It doesn't work like that. Like what will happen is if an event happens, it records and uploads that event and it sends to sends to a third party person who reviews the event. If it's one of the three triggers that we put down as if that's something we need to know about, they'll upload it and send it to our safety director only. Now, if it is something like you hard break because a car cut you off in front of you and you had to break so you didn't rear end them, you're not even going to get to, they're not even going to see that video. Um, because that's not a reason we want to know about. What we want to see is if you're hard breaking because you dozed off or you're playing with something in the back of the, the cab there or you're reaching or you're on your phone texting, something like that, that lost your concentration on the road that made you have to hard break. So that's the stuff that safety will want to see. What they do with that information is they, it's like a coach counsel type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, as long as it's not an accident, all accidents are automatically uploaded anyway. Those are for insurance purposes. They go right to the insurance agency as well as the director. Um, so I don't really know about those. But I know, right. like, the heartbreaking, roll stability, the same thing. Like, are you taking turns so fast that you are going to lose control of your truck and roll it? Those are the things they want to make sure that, you know, safety is, you, you, like, number one purpose is to be safe out there. We want you to get home to your families every day. So they want to make sure that you're as safe as you can be if there's something they can help you with. Um, not all of our trucks have this. What they used to do was put drivers in it that had a lot of CSA points to start them out to see if they had triggered any. If they didn't, they moved them into different trucks. That became such a pain because drivers didn't want to switch trucks. So they started doing all trucks having cameras. And now it's back to we're not buying the cameras for all trucks. So I can't say every single truck has the camera. I can say chances are if you get one of the older trucks, you will have a camera in it. Once you move into a newer one, you will not. Okay, okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Uh, Nicole, hey, thank you for, you know, reaching out to me um, and uh, and provide me some information that I can definitely take for myself and take back to uh, to the drivers of my group. Um, as far as 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 far as uh, you guys go, what is your policies for felons? Because there's a lot of there's a lot of guys that's coming out of that's coming out of the pen and yeah. some of them that you know, did they did, you know, paid they debt to society and all like that. And majority of them is yeah. coming into trucking. Um, what's your yeah. what's what's your policies on that? So it just depends on the the, the felony. To be honest with you, um, most of them are five years. Some of those more severe ones are going to be ten years. So it just depends on what the felon looks for. Um, usually, drug charges and things like that are going to be five. Things that are going to be a little bit more is any kind of sexual assault charge or any kind of um, child neglect of any sort mm -hmm. or any kind of um, like murder, second degree murder, things like those things might be more of a 10 year wait. Okay. Um, so it just depends on the, the charges, um, those kind of things for the company. All right. Now, uh, my last question before we get on up out of here, because I don't want to take too much of your time. You gave me just about enough in that. And I appreciate that. But what uh, I know you mentioned earlier, uh, you said something about, uh, you know, once we get qualified and everything. But my question is, what can get us disqualified? Um, so they're pretty strict on accidents. In the last 24 months, if it is a DOT reportable accident, you can't have more than two of them in a 24-month span. You can't have a 15 miles an hour over on your speeding record in the last 12 months. And you cannot have any seatbelt or handheld mobile device violations in the last 24 months or last 12 months. Okay. Um, or positive drug tests. The positive drug test or refusal of a drug test is uh, five years. Hold on now. So if I was if I was to come in now, let me ask you now there's there's twofold to this drug testing. So let's say for example, you you get me, you get me in, I get all get all giddy, get ready to go. I go to the drug test place, I walk through the door, then boom, 
I, you know, I, I give them the paperwork, but I'm sitting, I'm waiting for them to call my name to take the drug test. And then, boom, I get a phone call saying, yo, we can offer more, you know, offer more than what uh, Day Ross could offer you. Come on over to us and we'll get you together. I say, oh, OK. Then I go back to the uh, desk and I'll be like, yo, I'm out. Thank you. I'm I'm good. I'm taking another opportunity. Would that be a ding against me if I do that refusal? So it just depends. Each company reports that differently. I know for us, you would drug test before you came to orientation. So that would never be an issue for me. If I set you up for a drug test, you have three days to take it. If you tell me you can't take it in those three days or you don't show up for it, it doesn't count as a negative or a positive or a refusal. It just says that you didn't complete it mm -hmm. um, because it's a pre-employment and it's set up prior. Right. If you are attending an orientation for a company, and you don't go in, some companies technically list that as a refusal because you were there, you knew that you had to take it, and you didn't take it. Ugh. So if a company lists it like that, we have to take it as a refusal. Oh, okay. um, we don't list it that way, but if another company did, then we would have to take that as a refusal and you'd have to wait five years. Oh, man. So five. just be cautious on the companies that you guys go to because if you're not planning on joining them, still take the drug test and then jet. Do you know what I mean? Because it doesn't hurt you as long as your chest isn't positive. It won't hurt you mm -hmm. to take it and then just not go. Um, because not every company reports it that way. Every company looks at it differently. Some companies view it as, hey, we, we notify them. They had a certain amount of time to get it done. We're not like that. You didn't take it, so it doesn't count as a refusal if it's pre-orientation. Wow, five years. So that means, mm -hmm. so wow, so... If if I refuse the drug test today, that means twenty twenty seven is when I could come back to you guys and and try again. <coughs> uh, yeah, try try to today, yep. wow. Ooh, okay, that, hey, that's something. You know, that's something. It's that's that's clearing house. Clearing house changed the game. Yep. They 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 changed that the game. True. That's clearing house for you. Uh, as far as somebody that's you know that has some some scrimmage on their DAC report. Um, let's say they had it like last year. Uh, they had it like last year. So they got to wait uh, 2021, 2022. Then they got to come back to you guys in 2023, right? Correct. Okay, okay. Nicole, man, thank you very much. I, I really appreciate that uh, that you uh, – was a good sport on giving us all the information, all the jewels of uh, the New Day Ross uh, company. You guys could give them a call at seven or seven eight seven 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 zero eight eight three one seven, or you can uh, out you. Would you mind testing me uh, your information so I could uh, put that in the in the description box in the uh, Facebook group? Sure, I can send that over to you. All right, awesome, awesome. And uh, if you know, let them know. Let them know. Lashawn lockout men sent you guys. No, I like that. So she can, you know, she can get it. Oh wait, wait. Uh, sign on bonus? Any? There's no. There's not a sign on bonus with this account. Okay. Yeah. Well, eighty. Well, eighty two cent a mile. I wouldn't expect you guys to give a sign on bonus. You know, I think people will probably might jump on that just right off the rip. <laughs> oh, um, yeah. um, all right. You know, it always comes after I'm done. But um, what's the what's the least person the what's the less experienced person that you'll be able to bring in? Is it six, one, two, or five, or what is it? Twelve months. You have to have twelve months. All right, that'll work. That'll work. All right, man. Well, thank you very much again, Day Ross. Uh, I will definitely uh, put, you know, I will definitely put this in the uh, in the Facebook group, and I will also promote it as well, you know. And uh, and I really, really appreciate it. I th I thought you was catfishing me for a minute there. It was S and K. <laughs> no. it, it was S and it, what is it? S and K A and K A S A S A and S A and S. It was A and S Canard, and I'm like, I go to type it up. I was like, let me hurry up so I could get so I could say what I'm about to say. Dave Ross, Dave Ross, who is? 
Okay, I'm being catfished <laughs> over here. What's up? This this ain't no recruiter. This is a third party person. But <laughs> but thank you, <laughs> but thank you very much, no man. I, I send me send me all the information that you want me to uh, put out there, and uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we can get uh, we can get that uh, Georgia Pacific account cover for you. Sounds great. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Bye. Yes, sir. That's how we do it now with the new and improved MTC Lockout Men Makes the Call 2021. The new and improved way of getting companies to come on and promote their companies and want and they they would love to come on and get the information out for you guys. Um if you're a company that's interested in coming on and chopping it up with the lockout men and you want to get your company out there, feel free to reach out to me by text, just like uh, Nicole did. Or you can hit me up in the Gmail. That's lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can get me up at the DM over on Instagram because you guys, you guys, man, you, you guys just do it all. You know what I'm saying? Don't be afraid to come on to the show to promote your company, man. I'm not going to bite you. I'm not going to bite you. I had a few I had a few companies that reached out and they kind of like they kind of like backed up and backed out and I'm like, "Oh, that was why I'm afraid yada 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 yada." You, you we got it two ways over here now. We can bring you on camera or we can keep it on the phone. It doesn't matter. It's all about getting the information that you want out to these potential drivers because we, the Lockout Men podcast show, caters to drivers that's looking for information. You know, shout out to everybody that came on and and uh, and support the channel. All right. OK. Uh, 82 cent a mile. All right. This is some key points right here. All right. 82 cent a mile. And that's only because you'll be running a short route. So your miles ain't going to be nothing but like 80. I mean, about 25 you know, maybe 20, 25, but like she said, you'll still be able to bring home about maybe 11, 12, 13, $1,400 a week. Um, if you want uh, more miles than that, of course, the pay is going to be a little bit less. Uh, their regional pay is going to be like 61 cent a mile. They do run in the Northeast. So if you're not a fan of the Northeast, then I would suggest you not call in this company. All right. This company won't force you to go into New York, but you will have to go up in the New York area. You will have to go up in Maine, Massachusetts, Jersey, all that goodness of the Northeast pay a all the, the goodness of the Northeast. You're going to have to, you're going to have to go up in there and, and try to find a truck stop and, and, and small turn corners and all that. Good. Anyway, let me get back. Get me, let me get back. Um, felons are welcome. They're on a case by case basis uh, as of right now. And they don't know when, but as of right now, they have, Volvos and internationals. The Volvos are automatics. The internationals are manual. So yes, old school trucker that don't want to be bothered with an automatic. They got manuals for you. They got 10 speeds and 13 speeds. Get at them. That's what you want. You don't want to drive. You want to. That's what you want. Get at them. You feel me? All right. Uh, what else? What else? What, what what other key points? What other key takeaways? Um, look, man, the drug test clearinghouse changed the game. No, no more walking up into a uh, in, into a, a pre-screening drug test and then turn around and and leave. It's going to be an automatic. It's going to be an automatic. So your best bet is to take the drug test pass the drug test and if you decided to not go with said company then you you won't be deemed or anything like that because she said you failed that drug test it's going to be five years before you can check back with them 2021 
It'll be 2026. Five, six. It's going to be 2026. And that's when you could check back in. Mm. No disqualifications. You know what I'm saying? Everything is, it, make sure everything is on point. Because if you come with a bad or messed up uh, DAC report, don't even apply. Don't even apply. All right, that's going to do it for the Lockout Men podcast show, the MTC Improved Edition, MTC 21. Shout out to Nicole from Day Ross. Day Ross for coming into the show and providing the information that you guys need. Uh, if anything that if you, if anything that you guys want to know about, definitely give her a call at 877 808 I mean 708 831 seven all right i appreciate you guys watching and until next time everybody we're gonna get up out of here and we're gonna we're gonna stay we're gonna stay safe out there shooting shots later searching 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 and searching